Did you know the Bible only gives three times recorded in the scriptures where the devil actually speaks? Well, why is that? Hey, smart Christians, welcome back. One interesting fact that we don't think a lot about is the fact that the devil is only recorded on three different occasions, opening his mouth and speaking. One, the first time that we see in the garden speaking to Eve. Uh, then we see him again in Job speaking to God uh, about Job. We also see him again when he is speaking to Jesus while he's being tempted after the 40 day fast. We see that. There's also some times where we record what the devil has said when he states that I will be like the most high and, and ascend. And then we're also told that he has desire to, according to Jesus, sift Peter as well as the rest of us like wheat. But the question is, why only so few times hearing from the devil? I mean, here's the person who is the enemy of us all. He is the author and father of lies. He's our great adversary, but we don't hear a lot about him. Well, before I talk about why, it's also interesting to note that we only see a few times the Bible telling us how to deal with the devil. One such occasion is in James chapter 4, verse 7, where he says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Well, if that's all we had, that would be more than enough. Wouldn't you agree? But we also hear the Bible talk more about him. We're told that he is like a roaring lion walking around seeking whom he may devour. Well, so we should be, and he tells us to be sober minded. So there's another way to kind of be on alert, be on guard. So when we see him or hear from him or notice anything that's maybe not like him, but unlike God, then we should resist that. And in doing so, resist him. And therein lies the key. That's why we don't see or hear from one a lot about from him or hear a lot about how to deal with God. People will say things like, Satan, I bind you. No, you don't. You don't have the ability to bind him. The only time that he will be bound will, will be when God does so, when the angel will, bound, will bind him in the pit for a thousand years. People will say things like, I rebuke you, Satan. Do you really? No, you do not. What are you saying to him? Bad boy, not a good Satan, not a good devil. No, he doesn't take that with any sort of uh, any sort of intimidation. He's not worried about us rebuking him. There is a time, though, in Jude where the Bible says not even Michael does so, but he says, the Lord rebuke you. Satan, get behind me. No. How is that going to work? Has it worked thus far? So those things in terms of us talking to the devil, us trying to do battle with the devil, we're not told to do any of that. We are told to resist the devil and submit to God. As a matter of fact, I want to put this passage because I think this kind of brings the whole thing home. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, look what it says. We know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Well, the point is we're from God. The world is not. They're under his power. And so since we are from God, of God, what does that mean? That means that we are under his power, under his control, as well as his protection. Because look what it says in the previous verse, in verse 18. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. But he who is born of God protects him and the evil one does not touch him. So the reason why we don't see a lot being spoken of about him and we don't see a lot being spoken of how to deal with him because it's just that simple. The evil one does not touch us if we are in God, meaning we won't live a life of sinning. We don't have to worry about how to deal with his fighting and so forth. All we have to do is submit to God, draw near to him, as James says, resisting the devil. And the Bible says he will flee. So we don't have to give a lot of attention to him. If we make our focus on God, then we're okay. Amen.